What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling and this is a news break. So some big news coming up in the world of pro wrestling and sports entertainment. One of the things that really piqued my interest this week was that WWE has announced that it's doing WWE ID. Now the point of WWE ID is independent development. It is essentially their way <laughs> of doing what I thought NXT was gonna do, but uh, developing indie talent. But this is gonna be more of them getting their tentacles and some independent promotions and helping them along to do the WWE way of things. And again, this is this is part of the, you know, we all know what this is. This is the monopoly play by WWE as they continue to try to do this around the world and around North America. Um, again, I thought that's what the Performance Center was for, but this, seems to be more targeted uh, to certain other promotions. And they're also using certain people, including Cody Rhodes with his Nightmare Factory, Seth Rollins with his Black and Brave Academy, um, to foster the development of these indie talents. So uh, once again, you're not going to be able to come up with your own character. You're gonna be doing it the WWE way. And um, uh, again, Cody doing this at the Nightmare Factory is kind of interesting given, um, yeah, well, we all know the story with that. Um, not a fan of it. I, I wish they would just stop so much doing what they're doing and having to control everything. It really is unnecessary in my, in my opinion, but uh, for WWE to have total dominance, they're going to have to do that. Someone that they used to go up against in a more uh, adversarial role, who is far more kind and, and in bed with the company these days, is Eric Bischoff, who got total creative control of MLW One Shot. Well, so he's not going to be running MLW if you, you're worried about that, but he is going to have total control of the event that's coming up on December the 5th in New York. So it's going to be interesting to see what Bischoff does as far as booking the show. It's a bold move for him as much as he's uh, chastised, in particular, Tony Khan for his booking style, but he's chastised WWE in the past uh, for their booking style. But you're putting yourself on the line there because if there's anything that goes off of his show that isn't quite right, uh, he's going to get chewed up and um, by public opinion. And... You know, it, it is what it is. It depends on who he gets. If he's teaming this up with uh, some big surprises or whatever, we'll have to see. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's a funny, it's, again, it's another one of these funny things with the fact that the pro wrestling world is just a very strange place with very strange alliances. Someone who uh, uh, is uh, has commented on a video before, I unfortunately left them out when I was talking about Bullet Club last year, but Chris Bay, uh, of course, had suffered an injury. He's been rehabbing from it. Uh, Ace Austin, uh, his tag partner at some times, has talked about the rehabilitation. Um, now, Chris Bay did have surgery on Sunday, October the 7th. He'll be in Detroit for multiple day rehab sessions under direction of the specialist. But Ace Austin does say that, uh, you know, they may, he made that uh, Chris Bay made the choice. They're going to go forward with it, and he wishes him a speedy recovery, as we all do here. Wish Chris Bay a speedy recovery. And, uh, you know, if he can get back in the ring and continue his career, the guy was on an upward trajectory. So we'll have to see what happens with him in the future. I did want to comment, of course, on probably the biggest news from the middle of the week here. And that is the debut, finally, of Bobby Lashley in All Elite Wrestling. It happened on the Halloween edition show, the Fright Night Dynamite show, which, by the way, was actually... Probably one of the better Dynamites this year. I thoroughly enjoyed that show. From top to bottom, that show was fun. From the introduction with Orange Cassidy coming out, calling John Moxley, them going off and trying to attack him, that then turned into a brawl. And it was a well done brawl with the locker room coming out. Um, I think they set this up really well. Adam Cole and Buddy uh, Murphy, Buddy Matthews match was an excellent match. Again, they're, they're, they are incorporating more of the storytelling sports entertainment style into it, but I think it's working well for what they're doing right now. Uh, setting up that Adam Cole still not 100% probably mentally over his injury and his quest to go after MJF. Uh, hey Man Page had a really good promo delivered against, his, against Jay White for their upcoming match at Full Gear. The uh, event that was named after him in some ways <laughs> way back in the day. If you remember old AEW, you get that reference. Um, 
And a lot of stuff up and down. One, again, one of the bigger surprises of the night, we had a uh, private party who I was convinced was going to be split up. <laughs> I was convinced they were losing this match. They played this match with the Young Bucks expertly for the AEW Championship with that stipulation that if private party lost, they'd have to disband. I was convinced. I was wrong. Private Party pulls out the win in one of the biggest pops. They went from probably one of the most underwhelming tag teams about two months ago, and all of us, myself included, going, man, they haven't done anything in five years. They've been in AEW, haven't moved at all or progressed or evolved at all in five years. And now they're probably one of the biggest fan favorite acts in the company. So I have to give my hats off and kudos, and not only again to Private Party, but for the Young Bucks. Now the Young Bucks left after this, Claim to uh, announcer Marvez that they were going to be working from home in the future, which, uh, what does that mean for the elite? What does that mean for Okada and for Jack Perry? Uh, what does that mean for this whole thing with the Moxley group? What does that mean with their takeover for Tony Khan? So that storyline from earlier in the year, which looked like it was going to be a hot storyline that could have changed things around, has kind of fizzled out. And this was the official fizzle out of the whole elite taking over AEW from Tony Khan storyline which uh has suffered a very slow death I, I do like the elite group of okada and perry and the young bucks I, they they had some amazing matches over the year i'm never gonna forget <laughs> the the anarchy and arena matches the war game matches this year with those guys were absolutely fantastic matches uh so the elite are taking a hiatus from aew not sure what that's gonna mean but the end of the show saw, saw a great match that i really wanted to see between swerve strickland who another character, another star who has risen up and become a major star in AEW, and Shelton Benjamin, who made his debut a couple weeks ago of MVP. Of course, we've all been expecting Bobby Lashley to show up. Lashley did show up on this night, and the Hurt Syndicate or the Hurt Business 2.0 or whatever they're going to be called in AEW definitely put a hurting on Swerve Strickland. And uh, yeah, there, there, there's not any more dancing from Prince Nana. He had his eyes rolled back and his head was uh, <laughs> just Shelton and... MVP and Bobby Lashley basically brutalized the hell out of him. I love Ashley's new, um, uh, Lashley's new intro music, man. I, his WWE music was kind of cool, but this is like the same kind of WWE music he had, but with a little bit more urban beat to it, a little bit more flavor to it. Sounded more like a UFC a track you'd hear somebody come out to the UFC in. I thought it, I thought it fit him very very well, and. Um, uh, I'm very excited to see what's going on. You got a lot of very tough factions now lining up in AEW. The House of Black on one side. Now you got the Hurt Syndicate. You got Moxley's crew. So we're going to see some very interesting clashes in the near future with some of these organizations. One last little note I want to touch upon. If you haven't been watching uh, New Japan or any of the New Japan uh, YouTube channel stuff, there is a very interesting uh, video interview up with Kenny Omega right now in New Japan. And apparently Omega is going to be at Power Struggle, making a special appearance, so I can only imagine what that's going to lead to. Of course, this is probably all leading to January 4th and January 5th in the Tokyo Dome for the two big events, uh, Wrestle Kingdom and Wrestle Dynasty. So I want to know what you guys think about these stories. Let your voice be heard in the comment box below. And until next time, I will see you guys here for more news, rumors, and commentary on the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling. Have a good day.